afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Yasmine Flores, and I'm from the Department of Music. Welcome back to the arts at EPCC. Right now, as you can see, we are maintaining our social distancing due to the COVID-19, but I am very glad to be in our studio here at EPCC TV. With me today is Brack Murrow, from the art department at El Paso Community College. Hello, Breck, how Hello, are you? how are you? I'm doing very well. He was smart and I think he got rid of his paperwork. I don't know if I can do it on the fly, Breck, sorry. Oh. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold on to mine. Um, so, well, first of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're rather new to the college, right? I am. I, I was hired full time in 2019, the fall of 2019. Um, before that, I taught both here and at NMSU uh, mm -hmm. in adjunct capacity. Um, before that, um, I had a 22-year career in, um, in, in electronics engineering uh, for telecommunications. Um, I've been an artist all my life um, and a musician. I've uh, been in various bands uh, going way back. Um, and uh, I, I, after 22 years uh, in the telecommunications business, I decided to uh, go back to school. I uh, got my master's uh, at, uh, in Boston at uh, Massachusetts College of Art and Design. Um, came back home to New Mexico and uh, started uh, teaching. Very nice, that is so awesome. What a varied career. Um, and to also find out that you're also a musician, which we promised we wouldn't talk about, but <laughs> now I can't help it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so you just, you're a lover of the arts, and, and I'm always so impressed with your students' artwork. When we were in the mm. A building before COVID struck, mm. uh, just walking through the hallways and seeing the gorgeous artwork that your students produce. It's mm. awesome. I, I'm you. so impressed. So you are the district-wide coordinator of the art program. And so today I kind of want to talk a little bit about the degree in art that we offer sure. here at EPCC. And so I'm going to, first of all, talk a little bit mainly about some of the art shows that we've had in the past, um, mm -hmm. which features artwork from your students. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, before now, the art shows that the art department puts on um, are for all students, not just art students. Uh, they're for all students of the community. And, and this year, we're actually doing something a little different. We're opening it up to the El Paso community as well, so not just the student body of EPCC. Um, now, until last year, um, and, you know, of course, uh, March, uh, that, that uh, interesting, horrible, fateful day uh, when we decided we needed to go online, uh, we had, that was the spring, and we, that's typically when we have our art shows. Mm -hmm. And so, um, our, through, uh, our faculty had to scramble on how to, um, how do we do this now? Um, how do we still have an art show and do it safely? of course, virtually. Um, and Professor Zoe Spiliotis actually came up with a beautiful show. Um, it was actually even three-dimensional. You would walk in at, uh, through your computer screen, uh, walk in, look at the walls, just as you were walking in a gallery. Um, and so she made the experience just a, a lovely experience for both the students and the visitors to the show. Let's get more specific and talk about now the actual degree in art. Sure. So in looking at it online, I was seeing, first of all, drawing one caught my attention. Mm -hmm. What's going on in drawing one? Drawing one, so in, at, at EPCC, in the art department, we teach foundations. Um, now we're balancing that with inspiration as well through that creativity of, and, and inspiration. Uh, but, but we really want to prepare our students um, for possibly a four-year college, possibly, uh, you know, a career in, in art. Um, and so we really focus on foundations. And in drawing one, uh, we, we really focus on seeing. You know, I tell my students on day one, you're not in a drawing class. You're actually in a seeing class. Um, and, and our mantra is seeing is forgetting the name of the thing one sees. Um, and basically what, what we do in drawing one, we retrain our brain 
to see things as they are rather than the way we think they are. Um, and so uh, students learn to observational drawing. Mm. Um, in my classes, we practice through observational drawing through still life. Um, we practice uh, chiaroscuro, which is the five areas of light uh, that the Renaissance painters came up with. Mm -hmm. um, and they learn those basics, and then I give them projects. Okay, let's develop your own idea. You still have to use those you know, foundations, but let's develop your idea. So there's this kind of back and forth between uh, the foundations, which they, the skills they really need, um, and uh, inspiration and, and building critical thinking. Okay, wow, that's really awesome. So is this the class where you teach perspective, um, where it's the, what is that? The I guess it seems three-dimensional, right? Yes, yes. It's the road that goes to infinity, basically. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> that's right. That's the classic uh, draw the highway that vanishes on the horizon line. Right. Yeah, exactly. that's linear perspective. Okay, uh, there you go. Yeah, that's right. And we teach one, two, and three-point linear perspective. Oh. And so um, they, they learn to use perspective. Actually, we just... In, in all of my classes, we teach uh, the elements and principles of art. So it's the language of art. So perspective is one of the principles of art. And oh. so they, they learn that as well. Okay, yeah, and of course, I'm gonna sound like a doofus every time I try to come up with some term, you know, that no, I learned 100 I, years I, I ago. I would be but, that way in music. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you for that. And then the other class that caught my eye was Design One. Mm -hmm. Now, what is what is that? That's pr that is really focused on the language itself of both the art and design. Okay. Uh, so we do the elements and principles. So. In design, you're learning balance, you're learning composition, uh, you're learning value, uh, how to understand value, um, how to recognize subtle values. We, we have a lot of exercises that we do. And then, what, uh, you know, try to make it fun as well. So we, for instance, we have one project with value where they, they, they practice with gouache paint in my class and then they, create a self-portrait of themselves and and have to apply a scale of value t to their face. And so, um, so I, I think the way that uh, the department now is, is looking at a lot of foundations is how can we bring some contemporary projects uh, and teach the foundations when in that environment. And so design is all about um, learning the language of art. Okay, that's interesting. So now when you say values, explain that to me. Are you talking about light? Well, values would be, uh, so in value, uh, in black and white, oh. you have values. So you have, let's say you have a black and white scale from zero to 10. Zero will be white, 10 will be black, and you know, one through nine will be various shades of gray, uh, with there being a middle gray in there. Um, and of course, if you're, you know, it could it could stretch out hundreds of values in there if you're talking, say, like Photoshop. But uh, students learn how to place those values. Um, another project where they learn about the balance of those values is is an, a project I do called No Tan, um, and it's a Japanese word for light darkness, um, and it's this idea of of how the light and the dark balance in a composition. And so that's another, uh, another exercise that we do in learning the foundations. Design one is based, uh, is, is focuses on 2D art, so two dimensional art. Got it, okay, mm -hmm. all right. And then of course there's drawing two and mm -hmm. design two. So how do they develop in drawing two from drawing one? Well, my students for drawing two, we start to, I start to, we still focus on those foundations. Um, but I start to interject more, uh, I challenge them more on their critical thinking. How are they going to articulate themselves visually? Um, and does their visual articulation match uh, their idea? And so that's something that artists need to do. They need to, um, you know, we can, a lot of times, 
uh, even if you've been doing it for decades, like myself, um, you you have an idea uh, and you think you're articulating it, but nobody gets it. Um, and it's not that everyone has to get your get your art, uh, but you want to be articulate with as you possibly can uh, with your skill. And so, in drawing two, my students focus. Uh, we will do a, a project on practice with the foundations, and then we will uh, have a, a uh, then we'll have a project where we uh, I challenge ourselves to think critically, um, tackle a, a project or a, an idea or a theory. Um, we did a, a project a couple of weeks ago on social justice. Um, now they, they had a lot to pick from a long list of things that they might be interested in. Um, and I just let them choose how they wanted to approach it. And then in critique, we talk about, did, did you articulate visually you know, what your idea was about? Um, and so we kind of do that back and forth for drawing, too. Interesting. That's really interesting. I'm going to veer off topic for a moment, kind of jump off the page, and ask you this question. When I know for a fact some artists will train and can replicate anything mm -hmm. if you tell them I want something in the style of Rembrandt, I want something in the mm -hmm. style of so and so, and and they can replicate it to a T. But when they create their own artwork, mm -hmm. it's very different. Mm -hmm. And it's a very different style. It's an affected style. Mm -hmm. When does that develop for the artist? Well, you know, um, in drawing two, I pitch it out there for my students to think about. It mm -hmm. does come up in critique. Style comes up. Um, I tell my students, don't go out looking for a style. You don't, uh, if, if you go out looking for a style, like, you know, oh, I've got to find a style, you know, and do my own thing. You know, right. students think that. And then, um, but, but it usually happens naturally. Um, and, and you learn to recognize that the more you, you practice and think about your work. And you realize, like, oh, maybe, maybe that is my own voice. Um, and then they can, from that point on, they can kind of develop that voice. Um, and, and think about their own voice critically. Uh, so style is not at the top of the list uh, in my classes. And in foundations, it's something for, for students to think about, I think, in their second year. Um, and, 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 you know, by the time they get to junior, senior, um, if they go to a four-year college or they've been out of college for a couple of years and, and worked on it, they start to think more about their style. Um, and, and they'll be challenged in a four-year college about their style. Um, and it's certainly in grad school if they choose to go on uh, and that way. What is your style? My style, uh, my style is, uh, if I'm a sculptor mostly. Okay. Um, I'm, I have a, a long-term project going right now. My interest, my style is interdisciplinary um, in a way. Uh, I, I have a style where I mix neuroscience, music, um, and, and ecology into my sculpture. Um, and so I have science, I would say science and art, curiosity. If curiosity is a style, that's my style. Design two. Design mm -hmm. two, is that three-dimensional? It is three-dimensional. Okay. Yeah. So tell me some of the things over the years that um, students have come up with in 3D design. Yeah. Well, you know, design, 3D design is basically your, your doorstep to sculpture. Um, you're learning the language of three-dimensional art in 3D design. So like 2D design, you're learning the language of 2D uh, language, uh, art. And in 3D design, you're learning the language of space and time and movement, um, mass, um, those kinds of things in for, for three-dimensional uh, sculpture. And so some of the projects uh, Drawing into space. One of my projects is drawing into space. Students take wire, draw into space. Um, that's the first part of it. The second part of it, they come back and they put a skin on that. So uh, for most of the projects that I've done with them, 
Uh, they'll put a skin of, of say, crepe paper or uh, that, that type of paper you, that's real soft, it's you, tissue paper that you stuff in little gift baskets. Sure, um, yeah. Because it, it shrinks real well. So they, they glue it on to the, and create, take their drawing, which is basically a line in space, um, add a skin to it, and now they've got implied mass. And so uh, they learned, to, how do I balance this? You know, am I going to subvert it and put all the mass at the top and it looks like it's going to fall over, but it's not? Or am I going to put all the mass at the bottom um, where it looks like it's anchored? Or am I going to spread it out and, and try to, you know, expand on the idea? So that's one project uh, that we do. Okay. Wow, that's so awesome. And I, yeah, I've seen so many um, throughout mm -hmm. the years down the hallway as I, I would like to walk down there. The other interesting thing that we do in music, we started to, and I'm going to put it in your ear, in your mind's ear, is that we like to, it's really me. I'm the one that walks around and I find the painting for our faculty music poster. So, and then we like to feature mm -hmm. a student from the art department um, that, and so we've had a couple that we've, we have featured in the past and we'd like to do that again. We're, mm -hmm. we're hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is, is we have our dates set for the fall in music and so I'll be walking those halls in the fall, <laughs> yeah, right? In August right. and September to see what I can see, but just some stunning artwork in the past. Now, we have a couple of other classes to discuss and one of them is art history. Now, art history, you offer art history one and art history two. Um, and so kind of give me, what is the difference between art history and art appreciation? Well, art history dives a little more into, it actually is the history, focused on the history and usually chronologically. Mm -hmm. um, art, art history one pretty much takes you from prehistoric uh, to uh, early Christian uh, period. Uh, which is thousands of years. And then um, Art History 2 will take you from uh, early, late Christian or early Renaissance to contemporary to uh, late modern. Um, and so, and it's, it's, it's kind of approached more in a chronological, a building upon this movement to this movement to this movement kind of, and more in depth. Now, Art Appreciation is more of a survey in a way. Um, and the topics range, you know, from, from the context of artists. Uh, that's one thing I think students are really interested in learning um, when, about the context of artists. So art is not created in a bubble. Artists have never created art in a bubble. They are products of their own times. And so in art history, or in art appreciation, excuse me, um, we talk a lot about uh, what was on the mind of the artist? What was also happening during that period? You know, um, how do artists? What is art? We talk about that, and that's not an easy one necessarily to answer. What is art? Um, and it would take forever to talk about it now, so I'll shut up on that. <laughs> but, but art, is, art appreciation is more of an overview, part inspiration, part of built into the classes. Most classes uh, we. Before, uh, when we could go out in the world, um, part of the uh, coursework was going to uh, the El Paso Museum of Art. And that's always fun, taking students there and, and we walk through and talk about the art and they'll, uh, they're able to see it. Uh, and and uh, it, gives, it gives faculty a, a chance to, you know, uh, be a guide through time, a guide through creativity, and um, and we have some amazing art here at the El Paso Art Museum. It's just we're very lucky to have the collection that we do here. El Paso is great. It is yes. a beautiful city. And speaking of art, I think that something about the city itself it it just lends itself very well to colorful, just out there. Um, you know. Ironically, I'm, and here I go veering off topic again, but ironically in the 1980s when I grew up here, it was that graffiti was seen as something really terrible and mm -hmm. we were always trying to hide it, mm -hmm. right? Now, it's art. Yep, <laughs> yep. And, and we call it street art now. Right. Yeah, 
Um, <laughs> and and if certain parts of the world, certain artists, Banksy uh, sells for millions. Um, so how? Uh, uh, okay, that's a very interesting question. Speaking of that art um, artist, do they cut what he did out and sell it to the person, or does that person just purchase that segment on a wall? I mean, what? How does that work? Well, he he doesn't care. Um, okay, it's not his. Uh, it's not his intention for people to go and do remodeling on buildings and remove a section of wall, uh, which people do, um, um, or they'll they'll uh, put glass over it to make sure that it doesn't get graffitied over, sure, uh, or street art over. Mm -hmm. um, it he's he's kind of a court gesture in the uh, in the art world. Um, you know, case in point, his joke that he played. Uh, year last year, uh, on I think it was I think it was Christie's, um, one of his pieces that was up for sale. He actually built it uh, a couple of years earlier. It was a painting, one of his famous paintings, the girl with the uh, red balloon. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes. Okay. Um, this was a painting that he did. It was in a frame, mm -hmm. and at the auction. Uh, it was it was up for sale. The person who bought it um, wanted to sell it a, a couple of years later. Um, I think the price got up to uh, got up to uh, one point four uh, million, um, and the gavel went down. Um, and all of a sudden, there was this beep in the room, and everyone was looking around, and the painting was shredding itself. The painting started sliding down. The uh, through from the frame, um, and at the bottom of the frame, hidden, uh, Banksy had inserted a uh, shredder, and it shredded. But it it got stuck halfway down, so half of the painting is flailing in these shreds, and the other half is still in the frame. Um, and 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 of course the. <laughs> Knowing the art world, the next day it was worth 2.2 million. So <laughs> it's, uh, and he did it on purpose. Um, and he does that kind of thing a lot. So, how insane! Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I want to talk to you uh, while we still have a little bit of time about the other art courses that you all offer. Sure. And so I mentioned engraving, but that's tied into another course. Is that correct? We don't actually engrave. Engraving's part of a printing process. Okay. Um, it's very similar to a process that we do. We do intaglio, uh, which can be either an etching, or it can be you can use a burr, uh, much like it's just a little sharp tool that you scratch in onto a copper plate or a zinc plate. Um, if you're etching, you use acid. You uh, create. The drawing and etch into that, um, which creates a a surface that will uh, accept the ink, and then you clean the plates off, ex and it cleans off except for where you've etched, and the ink is embedded in there. Run it through a press, which applies a lot of pressure through these roller drums, um, and then you can just make the same process over and over, uh, the same print. Um, so, engraving is is similar to a process. Intaglio is what we do. Uh, one of the projects. The other is lithography, where we use these massive, heavy stones. Um, another process of etching, drawing onto the stones is kind of a drawing medium. You draw them with wax uh, pencils um, or crayons, and then you do etching on top of that, and then. Um, and then that creates this difference between oil and water not mixing, and you can print off of the, uh, the stone. Um, and then the other process we do is intaglio, um, uh, excuse me, uh, linoleum. Okay, linoleum, and I think that's the one I'm familiar with. Now, I'll, I'll describe what I'm familiar with, and you can tell me what it is. We'll play this fun little game. Uh, okay. So if you have, it's like a solid background, but there's some kind of wax that you scratch into, and when you scratch the wax out, it, it has like colors behind it. 
No, that uh, that's a little different than than uh, a lino cut or linoleum block. Okay. Uh, they call them linoleum slabs, and it's just it, it, it's called linoleum or lino cuts because it first originated from people pulling uh, squares off their kitchen floor and right. cutting into them. Oh um, wow! So you so basically what you're doing is creating a low relief. Um, and wherever it's cut out, it won't accept the ink. When you roll up that plate, it, it creates an image and you can just create multiple copies. That is really awesome. So Bragg, tell me what your favorite art is to, to create. Uh, to create myself? Yes. Um, my favorite art is something well, I like to dwell within the space of sculpture. Sculpture's my favorite, of okay. course. Um, but I like to dwell within the space of my art. So a lot of my work is bigger. Um, and the older I get, the smaller they're getting because I don't want to lift them as much anymore. But, that makes sense. But uh, I like to create a sculpture that does something um, and most of my sculpture does something. Some of them you can play as instruments. Uh, some of them uh, record sound. Uh, I've got a sculpture that takes methane and turns it into sound. Um, so I, I like generative art, art that I create and then it generates something else. If this was in an art museum, the one with methane, mm -hmm. so you're gonna have like a little can of methane or something off to the side and it was something well, I also, uh, video is also part of my, my, uh, um, my practice, and so I do create this kind of non-narrative or low-narrative uh, uh, videos of my work. Uh, I actually, I did use it at Shiprock, a uh, beautiful, beautiful place I go to whenever I can. It's kind of like my pilgrimage. Anytime I'm in the northern corner of New Mexico, I go to Shiprock on the Navajo Reservation, and and it happens to be the capital, methane capital of the world as well because of all the oil fields. Uh, and I used it there. Um, How neat. And filmed it. So that's what I share in a gallery okay. setting. Awesome. That is so awesome. Well, so Brack, you've told us so much about the, the art department today. And I admire all the work that all of you, um, Al Sarella, uh, Frank, um, and Zoe, and you and Isadora. Um, Isadora, that's yes. the one I know. Yes, I, I have not met Zoe in person, um, but I see her on Instagram a lot. And yeah. so <laughs> Marco, Marco is over at TM, and Lisa, Lisa Miller is over at TM as well. Okay, you guys do such a stunning job. I'm always in admiration. So Brack, I want to thank you. And but before we go, can you tell us what's coming up in the fall? Any kind of big things that you're doing? Well, you know, right now, I think what we're trying to focus on um, is face-to-face is -face classes. Um, so our studio classes have been extremely challenging um, to do remotely. Um, and so um, nearly all, if not all, of our studio classes will be face-to-face. -face. Um, right. And so that's going to be a new adventure, and, and I think we're uh, I'm just, I just want to say that uh, all of my colleagues uh, that I work with now, I'm so honored to be working with them. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got such an amazing program that's, that's really kind of starting to skyrocket and take off um, in all kinds of directions. And so that's what we're going to be looking for in the, f in the future and in the fall. Absolutely. Brack, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you, you so much. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>